Hey there and welcome to this new Blender tutorial. In this one we're going to make some Lego paintings. So without any further ado, let's hop straight into it. First things first, we're going to delete the default camera and lamp because we're not going to need it for now at least. Next up, I'm going to go into edit mode with this cube here, change it to face selection and delete the bottom face because once we array this, uh, it is going to take up a lot of faces that we won't even see in the final render. Now next up, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the uh, into the scaling or measurement section of it and once we get here, we're going to go to units, length and then change it to millimeters. You can choose whatever you like, but I found working millimeters uh, or in millimeters is actually way easier than any other. So next up, we're going to change the dimensions of this cube to be eight millimeters by eight millimeters in thickness or width and we're going to change it to 3.2 millimeters in height. Now I'm going to apply the scaling. So this here resets to one with control A and then scale. Now everything is reset and it should be good to go. Now we could actually make this all one piece with the stud poking out of it, but I'm going to actually not do that. I'm going to show you a way to make it look like it's connected, but it's not actually physically connected. So it saves us a lot of polygons because as I said, once you array this, it's going to have a lot of polygons to work with and your computer is going to get slow. So I think having it simple, as simple as possible is actually the best solution for this. And um, actually I tried it, making this all one mesh, it's going to result in a lot more faces that you're not going to need and you're going to have a worse result because you don't have enough topology. So next up, I'm going to import a cylinder with 32 sides, you can of course change it depending on how large the painting is in your scene. If you're really close up, you want to have more. If it's actually kind of far away, you want to have less because you're not going to see the detail. But for this example, I'm going to leave it at the default 32. I'm just going to delete the bottom face as we're not going to need it anymore. Now next up, I'm going to change this to be, uh, let me see, 4.8 millimeters in width. And let me check the height, it's 1.6. Yes, I wrote down the measurements beforehand, so I don't give you any wrong information. Now, next up, what we're going to do is enable the snapping and then go to face. And basically you want this to be over this because if it's under, it's going to snap the bottom side to this. So you want to move it up and then snap it here. So press G and then Z and it's going to snap it right on top of this. Uh, face here which is going to give us overlapping geometry which we need actually to have this work later. Now let's apply the scale for this one as well and we're going to actually give this a bevel. Now again, uh, wait, first of all select both objects then control J and then go into edit mode. Now press A and delete this and or not delete it, just deselect it. Now what we want to do is give this a bevel of 0.1 millimeters. Point one. And again, depending on how close or far away you are, you want to give it less or more segments. I'm going to go with four. If you are again further away, I would suggest keeping it at one or two segments maximum. Now this is basically fine and depending on uh, what you want, we are going to give this here a bevel as well. But we're not going to give it a physical bevel, we're actually going to give it like a fake bevel. I'm going to press W and shade the smooth and I'm going to give this a nice HDRI so we can see what we're working with once we are in a rendered mode. So let's go to HDRI. I'm going to choose this one because I like it a lot. And now we basically can't really get close enough to this. It's going to make us stop at some point. So I'm going to go cursor to world origin with shift S and then here. Then shift A, import a camera. Alt G and Alt R to reset the location and the rotation, bring it up a little bit and zero on the numpad. Now we brought it up, but our mesh is not visible. Why is that? Because right here we have this start clipping. It starts at 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters. If we bring this all the way down, you should be able to see our mesh. Now let's adjust the camera by disabling the snapping because it's actually going to make it harder like so, rotate it a bit. OK, 
Okay, like that. And now we're going to go into cycles. Because we're going to need cycles, otherwise we won't get the bevel here. Eevee works as well. Uh, Eevee actually looks pretty good with this, but you're not going to get the initial bevel in here, which you might want uh, if you are getting close-up shots. If not, I would suggest keeping the beveling off here. But I'm just quickly going to show you how to do it, so you can reproduce it yourself if you need it. Now I'm going to press Shift A here and search for the bevel shader. Uh, you just basically plug this into the normal and right off the bat you see nothing happening here. Now let me just press Ctrl B to get the box selection here and go into rendered view. And basically you don't see much. Let me just increase the metallic value and decrease the roughness a bit. And now if I take this off, you can clearly see that there is some difference. But you're not really seeing much. It actually looks kinda okay, but not uh, not really beveled. Not the way you want it to look. That is because the radius is actually way, way, way too big. So in order to get the same radius of beveling uh, that we actually gave to the rest of the mesh, it's going to be 0 0.0001. You can see now we get this little beveling effect here. You can further em emphasize it by just denoising this here you're going to see that it actually looks a lot better. Let this render out and denoise. You can see we're getting that little bouncing reflection here from the sun that is actually hitting, uh, hitting the corner of the mesh and that's actually simulating a bevel, uh, which is really cool. And uh, it only works in cycles up until now. Maybe they're going to change it later so it works with Eevee as well, but you can see it's all the way around. So this is with the bevel shader and this is without it. You can see it has a really, really sharp edge. So I would suggest keeping this in here. Four samples is really enough. You don't need more. Um, so I think this is fine. Now you can just decrease the metallic again. You can see it's still there, but just not as noticeable. So that is all fine and dandy. But what is a Lego brick without the Lego logo on it? So what we're going to do now is give this a bevel, uh, or not a bevel, a lego logo on top of the stud. So we basically want to have two normal maps, uh, or two, um, two UV maps, one for the painting job and one for the logo itself. So how do we do this? We're going to go here into this green tab here and go to UV maps and just give it a separate UV map. We're going to select just this top face here, nothing else, and we're going to press U and then unwrap. That is basically all we need to do. Now, I downloaded an image. It's currently on my desktop, so let me just find it. Here it is. Uh, you can just find this by looking for a Lego normal map or Lego logo normal map, and it's going to give you the, uh, the actual image on Google image search. So it's going to be fine. You can just find it there. If we plug this in, it's actually not going to be showing really well. So we need to set it to non-color data. Give this a normal map node in between here. And you can see it still shows really weirdly, even though we selected this. What we actually need to do is go to, uh, to UV map, import the UV map node, plug it in here into the vector. And still nothing has changed because we need to select UV map 001, which is the newest one that we created. And it's going to show up here. Now you can basically give this, give the rest of it a different position. We can go to UV editing, invert the selection, scale this all down and bring it somewhere here where it doesn't actually have the Lego logo inside of it. And now if we go here, you can see it's just the logo. Whereas if we put this here, you would have the normal mapping somewhere. So just leave it somewhere where it's go not going to be seen and you should be fine. So, uh, as you can see, this is one UV map. If we select this, there is a whole different UV map just for, for what we're about to do next. So, now the interesting part comes in. I have an image that I want to portray in Lego studs. I'm going to delete the camera again and import it later again. Um, so what am I going to do? 
I need uh, I need this to be arrayed a certain amount of times. Now I have an image which is 300 pixels, which I am just going to portray as 30 studs. So just the number of pixels divided by 30. You can check how many pixels your image has that you want to portray as Lego studs. And you can divide it by as many times as you want. Uh, so I'm going to depict the Mona Lisa. My image has 300 pixels divided by 30. That's uh, divided by 10. That's 30. And that is going to be one thing. You see, as we array it, we have this little nick here, which is why we beveled it. And we're going to apply this. And next up, my image has 447 pixels. I'm going to change this to 100. Uh, 447 pixels. I'm going to again divide this by 10. It's going to give me 45. Just round it up to the top. And this is going to be good enough of a result. You can of course change this up or down. It doesn't have to be perfect. You cannot have uh, 44.7 uh, studs. You're going to have 45. So that is fine. I'm going to apply this again. And I'm going to go to set origin to volume. Now hold G and that's going to set it right in the middle of your scene. Next up I'm going to press shift A, import a plane and I'm going to bring this up above the plane just a tiny bit. We can of course use the snapping method again but I don't think it's that important. Now let's get the camera again, bring it up and you can basically see where this is going. I'm going to choose a 4 by 3 aspect ratio or with other words I'm going to get this 3000 by 4000 pixels. I'm going to increase the focal length of my camera to 85 millimeters because I like the look of it. Make it so it shows everything. But now we're really not seeing that much. Even if we go into shaded view we're not really seeing much, are we? So what we would need to do is give this an actual image. Uh, so for that, I'm going to just take the painting of Mona Lisa. Just find it. Here it is. I'm going to import it into Blender. You can choose whatever image you like. As I said, uh, plug the color into the base color. And now we have a bunch of tiny Mona Lisas that are not even uh, correctly depicted on it. So that's a total bummer. I'm going to select the first UV map and I'm going to uh, go into edit mode and that might just take a while depending on how many studs you have. Select everything by pressing A and go into top orthographic view by pressing 7 on your number pad. I want you to press U and project from view bounce. And now you're going to have the Mona Lisa portrayed like this which is better, but not what we want. So let's just go into uh, the UV editing tab again. And here we're going to change this to individual origins. And now, as you can see, if we actually select all of this, press S and then point, let's just say some small number, zero, one. You get this, the Mona Lisa. And every little face here has, or every little stud has its own pixel. Now they're all kind of on the edge because of the, uh, because of the stud to pixel ratio. We can just move this a little bit and it should correct itself. So we don't get a line in between here uh, where the studs actually have two colors, two different colors. So once we move this just a tiny bit, it should be portrayed correctly. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, you have a little stud here. Uh, you have the little Lego things. Uh, what else is there to do? You could, of course, correct the... Uh, you could, of course, correct the um, Lego logos on top of you. But uh, I'm gonna let you do that yourself. You can just go ahead into the shading tab and here in between you can get a mapping node actually rotate this along the z-axis until you get something that you like. 
Uh, but I'm, as I said, I'm going to let you do that. You're going to have to move it and adjust it a little bit, or you just go into the UV editing thing and rotate it around until you get the look that you want. But yeah, basically that's the that's the entire point of the video. Um, I'm going to give this your material, just make it black. Give this less roughness. I'm going to actually rotate this like so. Because I actually know an angle that looks good from the lighting perspective. And yeah, I'm going to give this more roughness here and then a clear coat. Clear coat, clear coat of roughly this. And as you can see, we get a nice looking painting made out of Lego studs. So I hope you liked this. I hope you learned from this. You could make some things on your own. And if you like, I would be really happy if you sent me your Lego paintings on my Discord server so I can look at them and actually be proud of what I've done. Okay, I will see you in the next tutorial and that's it. Goodbye, see ya.